when we decided to go after those opportunities, the fact that we had built this platform for reuse allowed us to like very quickly come to market with, okay, so we want to go after audiobooks. We need a Spotify for audiobooks application. We can just extend the, the platform we already have in place to open it up for that industry. We don't have to start from scratch. We don't have to rebuild the wheel. We're just here and we're going again. Hey everyone, I'm Debbie Madden, the host of the Scaling Tech Podcast. And today I'm really excited to talk to Marcus Froden from Spotify. Hey Marcus, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Excellent. Uh, so before I tell everyone uh, about Marcus, uh, the topic that we're going to be talking about today is really exciting and very timely. We're going to be talking about internal platform reuse and exploitation and specifically how to shift from money is abundant to not and how this drives this whole conversation around platform reuse. Um, really important topic. Uh, one that doesn't get enough uh, airtime, if you will. Um, so before we jump in, so Marcus is uh, the VP of Engineering for Music at Spotify, which I'm sure we all know and use and love. Um, and he oversees Spotify's technology roadmap for music and artists, leads a team that spends their days obsessing over how to grow the music industry, help artists advance their careers, which, you know, with technology changing the way it is, is very important. Um, we're now than ever. Um, before Spotify, um, which you spent a decade at as an engineering leader, both on the consumer and the creative side, you worked with um, across industries, um, uh, newspapers, embedded software, uh, born in Sweden, uh, but lives in Brooklyn now. Uh, and lives in Brooklyn now. I don't know why I said but. but <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so welcome. So let, let, let's jump in. Let's start with, um, all right, so platform reuse plans shift, right? So they shift when tech teams go from a state of when they have abundance of money to when they don't, right? Whether his money is tight or real tech. <laughs> so how does this shift impact and drive platform reuse decisions? I know that's a big question, but let's start there. Yeah, it's uh, it's a big, it's a good question. I think something that like we think a lot about, and I think probably a lot of companies think about at the moment. And I think the the easy the easy thing is way to think about it is this: say a year, year and a half ago, two years ago, when when money was a little bit uh, easier to access for a lot of like venture back companies, etc. You didn't really have to think about if. I have a team going after one opportunity and I have a team going after another opportunity. And both of those teams require, let's say, you know, a, a shared user identity, a shared payments thing. You could just be like, okay, you, you go after maximize your opportunity, you maximize your opportunity. And we don't really have to look at the fact that like you are both building the same thing to do. That's so your sort of optimizing for each of those teams individual throughput. Uh, rather than saying, hey, if we just pause a little bit, maybe instead of having like 20 people here, we can take like five of those people, spend a little bit of extra time here, um, and then we can reuse that across both of those teams and we can be a little bit more lean and a little bit more efficient and hopefully get a little bit more uh, reuse over time and more more value of that as the company continues. So I think that's sort of the shift that lots of people are, are navigating now. Yeah, yeah. Um... And I'm sure some teams are navigating it better than others because <laughs> what <laughs> that, that shift is, is not easy. So, so that that leads me to so there's you know it's not easy and also not all cases are equal. So, how do you identify or what do you believe are the best candidates for platforms that are targeted for use? And then how do you how do you like is there like a, a system a graded system? How do you make this decision? Like, how do you identify these 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 candidates for reuse? It's a it's a another good question. I think the way the art of platform building that that you kind of have to learn, even working with internal platforms, is like you don't want to platformize too early because then you don't even know maybe what the business problem that you have uh, that you're trying to go after actually is. So maybe you're platformizing for the wrong problem. Um, you don't want to platformize too late 
uh, because then there's lots of rewrites and you have to convince lots of other internal teams like, hey, you want to migrate over to this new platform that we have. So which you really want to be building with teams and you really want to try to stick the landing on the timing and let the platform sort of evolve out of the, the use cases that the business sees. And so I think it's, it's a question of timing. And I think beyond timing, there's maybe a, a couple of other considerations as well. Like ideally, you can see a, a path where by betting on this one platform, by saying, um, okay, we're going to standardize on, on, you know, something else like we're going to have Kubernetes or whatever. It's a huge lift to get the company there. But amortized over the next couple of years, over hundreds of engineers, that thing is going to start to give a lot of value. So you can sort of amortize that investment. Um, and then I think finally, it's a question of like, is there a data advantage to be gained? So if you have multiple teams that are like contributing into one platform, they're getting user data, they're getting customer data. Can you then, by having all of that data in one place, can you then do better CRM? Can you do better machine learning, better targeting, all of those things? And so I think it's a question of really like, uh, timing, sort of amortization of, of reuse, and then data gains that you can derive from it. Absolutely, and I think I think in my experience, the amortization of reuse is a um, a key piece of data that a lot of teams almost skip over. Yeah. Um, yet it it I I appreciate how you, how you include it because I feel that it 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 ought to in many cases drive the short term decision because that short term decision is expensive it's a it's a in many cases a slog it's it's it doesn't come for free so you do want is it going to be worth it tomorrow um you know not just you know for for a little bit of time but down the road so uh, i appreciate that you mentioned that so you know but at the same point if you're if you're let's say if you go ahead and you know um you know uh reuse and combine uh platforms because it is the metrics indicate that it's the right time you're you're potentially introducing um vulnerabilities so how do you prevent like security or vulnerability risks um with with you know either reuse or combination like how do you think through the the risk side of this equation i i think there's there's pros and cons here so on the pro side you do have the data advantage and the platformization advantage. So if you have one team overseeing a platform versus multiple different teams, my experience is that you can get more sort of, uh, it, it's it's more effective to have a security person look over, a security team look over, and you know, vulnerability scanner, what may it be, look over like one platform than, than look over like five, 10 different systems. And the flip side of it, um, which I think you're, you're talking to a little bit is, is you know, if I'm a platform team over here, the business is over here, I'm pretty far away from the business. So I might be like misjudging the risks that the business actually cares about, like over like me and my platform team being further from the customer, being further from the experience being built. I may think that the following thing is a threat vector that, that really isn't for the business. And so I think you do get that leverage uh by by being in one place where you can get more bang for your buck but you, you need to build really like communication channels between platform team and the business team so that you know not only security risks but really any risks that the business cares about that you dial that appropriately so you don't become a blocker or that you don't become too like loosey-goosey i guess let's let's say that the shift is made right for the platform um how do you how do you communicate this across the organization and how do you then deal with the human beings who's i don't know how like the, we're not we're not talking about teams necessarily shifting um but but we are talking about you might need people in different roles you might need more people you might need fewer people but yeah talk about the the communication across the organization and how you think about the teams as the shift is being made yeah, I think this is one of those things that has changed a little bit given the current climate that we're in, because I think just a couple of years ago, nobody would, would assume that if you say that you're investing to reduce the amount of investment, like platformization, to be able to amortize the cost more effectively means that we're going to have fewer people working on a platform over time. Uh, 
like a few years ago, it would be implied in that that those people would be working on other things. Now we've seen waves of layoff in industry and everything. And so there's like a sort of almost like a menacing undertone to that communication. And so I think it's really important to uh, to be cognizant of that as a leader so that when you are talking about like, no, 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 we, we, we don't want you, both of your teams to build the same thing, not because we're trying to like lower the cost footprint of the company, but because we think there's more valuable things that you guys can work on. And so I think you need to craft a story that doesn't only say like, why is this good for the company, but why is it good for the individuals involved? And I think this idea that I shared before about co-building when you're working with the, the platform team is working with the team that needs the platform, I think is a way to also address like making sure that the folks that that know the problem space may be better because they've been closer to a specific business problem that they feel involved in the solutioning and feel like they are they are part of working out what that solution should be so that they they feel sort of along for the ride so i think that's an evergreen but there's also this this new aspect around this not being too menacing i i, I guess the way to say it yeah yeah no i i do i do think that the um the external factors um specifically you know right now the environment um across the tech industry does change that conversation um and 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 like so so that kind of that kind of leads me into you know i i i appreciate how you're talking about the teams and co-creation and make sure that any um underlying message that might be inferred from the main message <laughs> is addressed um because you know that that happens we're talking about um reuse um and and platform combination in times of what when, when money is not abundant so in these times how do how spotify is a large organization with a with a you know a massive tech team you know you know many people know the famous you know squads guilds tribes that that i know that spotify has even changed over time so there's a lot of moving parts here, but how how do you guys balance um, innovation when when you know with with platform reuse um, in times when when there's not money abundance and then you know there's obviously financial constraints at all times, but yeah, how do you how do you how do you balance innovation with you know um, reuse, which is really efficiency but it does take time and money right and innovation takes even more time and money. <laughs> <So>. I mean, <laughs> yeah i high level i feel like you know constraint breeds innovation and so so i think mm. as a technology industry i think I'm, I'm not saying spotify but i'm saying overall like i think there's been some amount of like laziness over the last couple of years in terms of we don't have to think hard about the constraints that we have. We can just have more and more people work on things. Um, and when I when when you have more um, tight boundaries, it forces leaders to make more explicit trade offs. Um, so it it forces you to say, do I really want to invest in this or do I really want to invest in that instead? Because I can't have both. And I think ultimately that's going to lead to better products because you 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 have to make a choice. Um, and I think the way that platforms play into this is hopefully the the way a well-made platform investment should pretty quickly start paying off as a way for you to maybe be a bit more fully saying I want to I want to do more of this because and I, now I can because I have this this platform uh, that enables me to do that. You had mentioned that um, in your answer that often constraints are are the required ingredient for real innovation and um i i think i think that's so important it's not the the main topic of, of what you and i are discussing right now but i think there is a um um tech leaders are are who are really pausing to almost view our current realities as an opportunity right all right well now we have now we have to before, before you know, now now we ha have to X, Y, and Z fill in the blank, right? We have to be um, very intentional with our innovation. We have to be, be very considerate with where we spend our time and money. Um, I do think that that is for for the teams and the leaders that are looking through that lens. Um, 
um, there is positive outcome. Um, yes. And I think we get into trouble when we continue trying to do what we did before, even though the reality has shifted. But what do you think about that? Yeah, no, no, I think that's exactly right. I'm an optimist. I, I think what what's um, for any company that like goes through a, a challenging period when it comes to like the level of investment that you have available to you, the types of trade-offs that you have to make. If you can navigate that, our one of our co-founders, he, he, he's the he's known for saying that the value of a company is the sum of the problems solved. Um, uh, and I think that's like a, a nice way to put it. And I think if you can navigate through a period of, of more constraint, uh, that, that I think that leads you to a much better, like a much better place. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a believer in like small teams of amazing people can do great things. Uh, and I think, when you are more constrained, you're forced to go back to more of that startup mindset than maybe you were before. And so so I hope there's some like enduring lessons that everybody gets out of this so we don't just go back to a place where, um, okay, capital for whatever reason is cheap again and we're back to like overabundance. I think there, oh, I'm hopefully, hopeful like as an industry, there's lessons learned in, in the shift we're in. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, time will tell on that one. Uh, so... <laughs> So I want to bring the conversation back and, and end kind of where we started with, with yep. if you if you can, um, can you share or think of some successful examples when platform reuse has contributed to um, operational efficiency, right? Because you talked about how to think about it. You talked about some of the pros and the cons and the risks, and then we kind of zoomed out a little bit. But um, any any examples that you can share of oh when when you know you saw this happening or you were part of this where it really led to um, true operational efficiency that that uh, folks can kind of learn from. Yeah, no, uh, I I have two two different examples from from Spotify that I that I refer back to when I think about this. So one is like very very near and dear to where what I work with right now, which is. Um, well, well, we we serve the music industry in, in my part of, of, of Spotify, and so we have a product called Spotify for Artists that enable us to do that. So, if you are a if you're a musician, if you work at a record label, if you're anybody that deals with the creative side of the industry, you use this product on a on a daily, weekly basis. When we started building that product, we decided, oh, there seems to be some things here that are probably worthy to consider being able to reuse. So, for example, um, when it comes to like managing permissions and access and rights, or maybe who gets to pay for a certain thing, who gets the permission to upload this type of, of music video, etc. All of that is very complicated in the music industry, but we thought probably there's, there's going to be reuse opportunities here. And now over the last, say, five years, Spotify has been getting very deep into podcasts. Over the last year, we've been getting into audiobooks. And both of those industries have similar sort of um you know creative teams like a podcasting team or like there's an audiobooks industry that does audiobooks and so when when we decided to go after those opportunities the fact that we had built this platform for reuse allowed us to like very quickly come to market with okay so we want to go after audiobooks we need a spotify for audiobooks application we can just extend the the platform we already have in place to open it up for that industry we don't have to start from scratch we don't have to rebuild the wheel we're just here and we're going again um, so i think that's a very clear-cut example of where just like building for platform reuse saved us i don't know somewhere between nine to 15 months of go to market time for for getting to market with that i have another example as well but i want to be be uh cautious of of, of time here so yeah, no, I appreciate it. And that's a great example. And I and I will I will say at a meta level, the Scaling Tech podcast uh, is on Spotify. So I appreciate your platform reuse. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this this has been a really great conversation. Um, I appreciate you taking us through some of your firsthand experience, some of your kind of theories around how to approach thinking about platform reuse, um, especially like we didn't really touch on or appreciate how um, many 
tools and products and human beings make up the Spotify tech engine. And it's it, it's like um, a thing of beauty every day to put it together and to have it continuously operate um, across, you know, across the years. So this has been really great to talk to you specifically just because of the, the complexities inside Spotify. Um, so yes, thank you so much. It was great um, to chat with you and catch up. And uh, thanks everyone for listening. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. It's a real pleasure. So thanks for having me.